Hello, welcome to CS with Terry. A tree is a widely used data structure in programming. However, it is much more than what we commonly know about it. In this video, we will dive deep into the characteristics of trees, which hopefully will help you gain a deeper understanding of trees. First, let's look at the problem. Given a rooted tree, how to judge whether node A is an ancestor of node B? Here is an example that explains this problem. In this tree, if A is here and B is here, A is an ancestor of B. But if A is here, A is not an ancestor of B. So, how do we solve this problem? At first glance, this question may seem too easy. We just need to try to search for node B by traversing down from node A. Or try to search for node A by traversing up from node B. However, in the worst case, the time complexity of this naive algorithm is O n. For example, when the tree is a linked list, and A and B happen to be the root and the leaf nodes, we need to traverse the entire tree to determine whether A is an ancestor of B. So if we need to check the relationships for different pairs of nodes on the same tree multiple times, how should we optimize it? Another solution that we can easily think of is to cache each node of its subtree into a hash table, like this. This way, every time you query the hash table, you can quickly determine whether a node is an ancestor of another node. However, in the worst case, the space complexity of this algorithm is O n squared. It's not very efficient either. We have tried two algorithms, but neither seems to do a very good job. There doesn't seem to be a straightforward method to solve this problem. If we think outside the box and dive deeper into the nature of trees, we might get some inspiration on this problem. The key of the problem is to check the relationship between two nodes. When talking about relationships, what would come to your mind? Maybe we can try sorting the nodes, which can establish order for all the nodes. Have you learned any way to sort the nodes in a tree? Maybe you have learned about tree traversal, such as pre-order traversal, in-order traversal, and post-order traversal. By traversing the tree, we can assign the nodes some kind of order, among the three traversal methods, in-order traversal is not suitable for this problem because it only applies to binary trees, and our tree can be more than binary. Let's look at pre-order traversal first. This is the pseudocode of pre-order traversal. Let's take a look. First, we'll need a global variable t, which will be used to record the index of the pre-order traversal. Next. We design a recursive function pre-order for pre-order traversal and pass in a node. At the beginning of this function, we assign index t to the node and let t increase by 1. Then, we recursively call the pre-order function for each child of the node, which assigns indexes to the child nodes. This is a recursive function for pre-order traversal. Of course, we need to execute the pre-order function on the root node to perform a pre-order traversal of the entire tree. OK, let's execute the program. Do the indexes help solve the problem? We can find such a phenomenon. If node A is an ancestor of node B, the index of A must be smaller than the index of B. For example, A is here, B is here, and the index of A is indeed smaller than the index of B. This is because the index of the pre-order traversal represents the arrival time of this node. In the recursive process, we must visit A before B. However, if the index of A is smaller than that of B, does it necessarily mean A is the ancestor of B? It's actually not the case. For example, A' prime is here, 
Although the index of A prime is smaller than that of B, A prime is not an ancestor of B. Let's think about this question. Both the indexes of A and A prime are smaller than that of B, but why is it that only A is the ancestor of B, not A prime? To answer it, let's review the process of visiting A and A prime. When visiting A, we first assign index to node A, and then visit all subtrees of A, which of course include node B. After visiting all subtrees of A, we go back to node A and end our visit to it. When visiting A prime, we also assign an index to node A prime. Since it does not have any subtrees, we just end our visit to A prime. Now, we can see the difference between A and A prime. For A, its arrival time is earlier than that of B, while its departure time is later than that of B. For A prime, although the arrival time is earlier than B, its departure also happens before visiting B. Therefore, to solve this problem, we not only need to record the node's arrival time, but also its departure time. We can slightly modify the program and record the node's arrival and departure time simultaneously. We still need to make a recursive call to compute the arrival and departure time of the child nodes. By the way, the first half of the program is pre-order traversal, and the second half happens to be post-order traversal. Let's execute this code. Now that we simultaneously record the arrival and departure time for each node, our problem is also solved. Let's take a look at the isAncestor function, which is used to determine whether A is an ancestor of B. We can see that if A is an ancestor of B, the duration of A's visit must span that of B's. Otherwise, A is not an ancestor of B. This is a very efficient algorithm, especially if we need to call the function multiple times. Now that we have solved this problem, are there any other insights we can gain from it? As mentioned before, in order to solve this problem, we record its arrival and departure time for each node. We can actually use a line segment to represent this node, where the two endpoints of the line segment represent these two moments. Let's do the same for all the remaining nodes. As a result, each line segment corresponds to a node in the tree, and the two endpoints of the line segment represent the arrival and departure time of the node. What kind of properties between these line segments do we observe? We can observe that if two line segments have overlapping parts, their relationship can only be one of containment, but not intersection. The so-called containment relationship means that one line segment completely contains another line segment. The so-called intersection relationship means that although two line segments have overlapping parts, their front and the rear endpoints are staggered. Therefore, we can conclude that a rooted tree is equivalent to a set of nested line segments. When we are judging whether A is an ancestor of B, we are in fact judging whether the line segment corresponding to A completely contains the line segment corresponding to B, which is why we can optimize its time complexity to O1. Have you encountered the scenario of rooted tree being equivalent to nested line segments before? It is actually pretty common in programming. HTML, for example, is like that. As we all know, HTML is a tree-like structure, and we can use DOM tree to represent HTML. On the other hand, HTML is essentially a string that's flattening it. 
we can see that a node in HTML is a substring in this long string. Let's use line segments to indicate the start and end positions of this substring. As you can see, if you put all the segments together, they form a set of nested segments. In conclusion, we can represent HTML either as a tree or as a set of nested line segments, which confirms our previous conclusion that rooted tree is equivalent to nested line segments. Before we end today's video, I'll leave you a question to think about. Today, we learned how to convert a rooted tree into a set of nested line segments. How to reverse this process? In other words, given a set of nested line segments, how to construct it into a rooted tree? That's all for today. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and share it with your friends. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave us a comment. Thank you and see you next time.